Hey all, welcome to another Let's Build with Ruby on Rails. And this is like my device mini series. So this one's gonna be customizing device to log in with Twitter. You've probably seen this on other apps in the wild that you can just authenticate with a social provider or some sort of provider, uh, be it like GitHub or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, etc. And for this specific tutorial, I wanna cover Twitter, which kind of encapsulates what you would do for other providers as well but i can do more in the future that are kind of more maybe dependent like github we get different things back from that provider like a username or repos etc that allow us to log in and see some of that data thanks to that authentication method so this is using device like i said so we'll actually run with device and add a third-party gem called omnioth as well as omnioth twitter and using those combined with device, we can hook into this fairly simply. This specific solution is very direct towards Twitter, but we can make it maybe in future episodes more scalable to if you add any type of provider, be it Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Those can just kind of loop through and work the same way. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll just show you by example, I'm, I'm on my basic kick kickoff template. If you're not following along and using this template, there is some groundwork to do. You need to install device, kick off a new app basically. And maybe I'm using Tailwind of course in this template too. So that's a different thing to discuss, but you could use any framework for CSS. And you need the views for device because you'll need to add this link. Um, so generate those if you're brand new and not using my template. But if you are, you basically are all set up. We'll just add this link as we go. And sign in with Twitter. This redirects to my personal Twitter. And basically that's it. I'm authenticated. So I'm already signed in. You see the log, log out button is present and the login button goes away. So we're authenticated at this rate. So this app does fairly nothing, uh, but it does allow you to see the state of logged in, logged out. And you can see in the success state when I do log in, it actually tells us that we logged in with Twitter uh, provided that. So the big kicker here is you need to sign up for a uh, Twitter developer account and there's it basically gives you access to their api it seems pretty intimidating when you do it but you need to create a new app in your account uh, i have one set up for my web crunch uh, account even though it's uh, my personal twitter and you need to create a new app um, and then we'll actually pass some callback urls that's what's kind of important for this case because we need to define these and allow our app to know where to redirect after it's authenticated so this part i can't help you 100% with you need to create the app uh, make sure you get it to the state uh, and allow you know this stuff to happen you can you have to go through this application process process with Twitter and it's kind of annoying but once you do you can actually access the app area or products etc and uh, create an app that's just the default I just called it device Twitter on the auth I'm going to use the same one in this tutorial just to save some time and you want to enable it to sign in with Twitter and then give some callback URLs, which I'll talk about coming up. But these are relative to our local host right now. Uh, eventually, once you put this in production, you wanna put actual callback URLs here um, that are live, so not local host. So that's the kind of nitty gritty constraint of logging in with the third party is you do need to set up these apps with them. Uh, so you'll have to do that for each of them, which is annoying, but I see why it is a thing. So let's kick this off. I'll just go ahead and create a new app using my template. I'm gonna to go to my sites directory. I have the current app we were just looking at open and I'm going to run uh, Rails new. Uh, let's see, let's call this, what did I call it? I kinda of wanna keep it the same device. Sign in with Twitter. And then I'll pass a template, which is going to be my kickoff tailwind and then template.rb. Now I have this locally. I say this every time, but this directory lives in the same directory as this app's going to generate. So you'll want to reference it either locally like I am and reference this exact template name or through a URL or some sort of path that leads to this template. And dash M means we're going to use a template when we scaffold this app. So this just sets up device, it sets up tailwind, it sets up uh, sidekick and stuff that I use with this template just to kick things off and get the ground, um, get things rolling faster for these tutorials. So I'll go ahead and run this and we'll be right back. All 
All right. If you can hear my fan spinning, so that might do the same if you're on a laptop or something like that, but let's go and CD into that app now. All right. So we're there and we can just do a Rails server just to see where we're at. It is Rails 6, I should say. So this will reboot. It'll probably look honestly the same. Um, it's kind of the base look and feel that I give the template. Yeah. So if I go to login now, you won't see the Twitter link or anything. So we'll have to add that. But to do that, we need to modify our user model to account for such a thing. So since this relates to our user or authentication uh, resource, it could be your username or your user, say you name it user or account or profile. Some people like to name it something else. User just seems to be the most widely used. With that in mind, we can open this in Visual Studio code is my preferred editor right now. The main thing we want to do is add a migration at this point that extends device as well as our user model to account for these providers. So a provider is going to be a string on the user model and then we need a UID. So a user ID for that as well. So this is how we'll identify the user with the provider and OmniAuth. So it's, it's a little complicated, but bear with me. So rails generate migration, add, Omni auth to users. And you could do this in uh, snake or camel case or not camel case. Yeah, camel case or snake case, whatever you want to do. And then provider will be the new field on the user's table will be a string. And then uh, UID is a string as well. So those two things we're adding to the user table right now. So I'll run that. And it'll generate that migration. We'll go to DB just to check it out. And this is what that looks like. So again, it's going to be on the users table. Since I use my template, I've already got a users table since I generated the device setup. Uh, I also extended device as I usually do to add an admin flag uh, for a, like a Boolean and a string for a name and a string for a username. Just to give you those things out of the box if you use that template. Those don't automatically come with device when you install it yourself. So with that in mind, we'll want to migrate the database. So Rails DB migrate. Cool. All right. So with that done, uh, we need to kind of, this is, this is the point where you would probably set up your developer tokens. Um, I'll do that offline so you don't see what I'm doing uh, or use my keys, but we're going to use Rails uh, encrypted credentials. And to do that, you can say Rails credentials edit. It's going to throw back, hey, tell us what editor you want to use to do this. Um, I'll just use code again. So you just say editor equals code and then pass a wait flag. And we'll say Rails credentials edit again. And this should open up your credentials file, which is a YAML file. This gets encrypted when you save it and close it. So what I want to end up adding are two fields that are going to be a Twitter pub API. This is, you can call them what you want. I'm going to call them this and then a Twitter API secret. And we'll reference these later in the app outside of this, the scope of this file. Uh, but for a quick, uh, pause, I'll add my keys now, and then I'll come back and save this file down. Once you close this, it will be encrypted. And that's the whole point. So you can actually version control this. Um, the one thing you'll have to remember is to share your master key that gets generated. It'll be a master.key file. And that will need to be shared with anyone else who might be working with you. We, If I work on this with other people or someone, I tend to keep that in like a tool, like one password or something just so people have access to it and don't have to share it across like Slack or something weird. So I'm going to add my keys. I won't show that part and then I'll come back. We'll have this file saved and it'll be encrypted and we'll come back and reference these later. Okay. So guys, I saved that file. It is encrypted and saved. Now I did my get, get my keys from the uh, Twitter developers area. If you go into the, your app, you see a keys and tokens panel. That's where they're going to be. So go ahead and grab the public key and the secret key and then add those accordingly. That's going to allow us to talk to this API essentially. Uh, okay. So with that, we can move on to some device setup. First, we need to add a couple gems though. Let's go ahead and 
at the very bottom, if you use my template, that's where these new ones will be. So we'll just carry on that tradition. We already have device, which is good, but we need a couple more. So I'm going to say Jim Omnioth and then Jim Omnioth Twitter. Cool. Don't worry about version controls right now. You might want to if you go and reach for this and need something that doesn't uh, conflict later on. Uh, that's something to think about, like this, these kind of things. Uh, but for now, for the purpose of learning, I'm just going to leave it as is. And we'll run bundle install. Cool. So that should essentially be ready. And next, we need to configure device to talk to that new gem that we added. So we have OmniAuth and then that provider of Twitter. So that's going to happen in our config initializers device file. So at the very bottom uh, is where I added mine. You can add it wherever, but it will look like this. Config.omniauth. And then we're going to pass Twitter as a symbol there. And rails.application. Here's how we're going to get those credentials we added. Credentials fetch and then pass in the, the actual name of the one we use so twitter this is going to take in both the public first and then the secret second so twitter api public oops public comma and then the second parameter is the same thing but the secret Okay, so when you modify this file, it's a good idea to reboot the app. Anything in the config directory, I would just recommend doing that. Uh, new versions of Rails, that might not be the case, but I've been burned in the past. So take it with a grain of salt there. Cool, so with that done, that should be initialized. Hopefully we don't see any errors on the front end. Nope, okay. Let's go to our app models next. And inside the user, we're going to have this basic setup with device already installed. If you installed it yourself, you probably added this manually or not manually. It, I think it installs uh, automatically. So that's great. So you probably have this. Uh, you see the one that's coming out here on the very top. We're going to add that one back and I'll just make a new line. So Omni authable. And the trick here is we need one more to pass in our providers. So Omni auth. Omni auth providers. And that's going to be Twitter. So eventually we can add more here. It would be like Facebook or whatever you want to add. But for now, I'm just focusing on Twitter. So we'll continue that. And don't forget the I like I did there. There we go. That basically sets up Twitter to be ready to roll with the Omni auth provider. Uh, that gives us some newer URLs too in the app. So if I go into Rails info routes, whoops, well, we can see it there too. But if I go here, we'll see user OmniAuth callback and authorized callback. So you remember that I was talking about those callback URLs. That's part of what that's going to come into play. Um, but we'll come back to that. This sets it up in the app to be users off Twitter and then the callback as well. So there we go. Quick and easy win there. Um, we will need to add a custom route for such a thing though. So we need to add it in the, where am I at here? Routes, routes, yeah. So we're, currently we have our home index, but we have our device for users and that's Perfect, but we need to extend device a little bit to hook into a controller that we're gonna modify some stuff to work with Twitter with. So we'll say controllers and then OmniAuth callbacks. And this this is part of device, so they, they expect you to either use their default or uh, go ahead and use your own. So I'm gonna say users, and this will live in our controllers directory, OmniAuth. Callbacks. So we could save that. 
And then inside our controllers, since we passed that specific path, we can add a, a folder called users. And inside that, we'll add that OmniAuth callbacks controller. So if that isn't quite clear, go right back to our routes. You see that we're passing that path in. So it's expecting that to be a controller. And then within that users directory, and then this OmniAuth back on the auth callbacks controller so we can omit the controller bit inside here since we're inside the users folder we need to kind of scope it as such so we'll say class user omni auth callbacks controller and it will inherit from device omni auth callbacks controller that sets up their class to kind of talk to device. Then in here, you could make a method that's kind of a catch all for each provider. But since we're just doing Twitter, I'll just keep it simple. So it's maybe more easy to understand. So we'll set one up for Twitter and it's essentially going to say user equals user from OmniAuth. And we're going to create this method in our user model coming up. But for now, I'm going to have it just in here and then we'll get based on the request uh, we'll get a parameter back that's going to be called omni auth auth so this is just like session data in a sense so like if you Say something to a browser session, you can access it later uh, or flush the, the session if you need to. So it's, it's a way to save kind of local data um, pre local storage. Then we could say user if user persisted. So if it's saved to the database, we'll have an else in here too. We'll say sign in. And redirect, which is a method we get from device so direct user whoops user and then we'll say event authentication and then set a flash message you can say notice success and then we could say kind it's Twitter. This allows us to say like in that green notice that spans the top, uh, like it's relative to what provider you used. So we can conditionally render something there. Cool. And then else we'll say session, oops, session device dot twitter data equals request dot env omni auth auth accept extra and then redirect to new user registration URL. We need the full URL instead of the path, since this could be outside of the scope of the app. And then we can say def failure. If there's a failure, we can just say redirect to root path. Okay. So what this is doing is we get this method from device, sign in and redirect, and then we're going to get this user instance. So assuming this is, is great and all set up correctly based on the request, uh, we'll go ahead and authenticate that user, log them in, and set their success message that they're logged in. Now, this is getting, if you're not used to sessions uh, or how sessions work in, in Rails, it's kind of like saving stuff to the browser session and it's kind of like local storage in a sense. Now, we can save it in such a way that it's, you basically look for this omniauth.auth parameter. You can pull data out of that. It's like a key value pair thing. So the same is true for the session device, uh, Twitter data. Um, we can get that data back from this request 
data, except there's like an extra field, which is a bunch of other stuff on the Twitter um, API that can come back if you need more data, like a, I don't know, recent tweet or something weird um, or something about the profile. Um, and that stuff, you can make the payload that comes back less bulky if you just do accept and actually sell, spell accept right. <laughs> That's one thing I suck at doing, accept extra. Okay. And then redirect new user registration URL. Let's try this in action. I think there might be one more thing I need to do in the user model. Yeah. So this from OmniAuth doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and add that. And this is going to essentially create a user account on the fly uh, based on that OmniAuth request. So we can say def self self refers to the user class directly. So we could say from OmniAuth off and then we'll say where provider so auth dot provider provider is what we added to our user model in the beginning if you remember uid is another so we'll say auth dot uid so these come back in that session or the request from the api and then we could say first or create so that means basically find the user if it exists if they don't go ahead and create one and then we'll do a loop so do user and pass in some data around that user. So you could do what you want here. So you can even get the, like the avatar from Twitter or something, uh, but we're just gonna do the basics. So we'll say user.email is equal to use or auth.info.email. And you're gonna have to like kind of dissect the request that comes back. You can do that in your view, like debug the session um, and, and see what's going on in your browser. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll just go ahead and assume we'll go ahead and set this up. Uh, device has a f password provider helper. So you could say device, which is super handy, friendly token. We'll just say one or zero to 20. Oops, it should be a comma. And we need a user.name since I have that table on the database. You might not if you didn't use my template, but that's okay. You can skip this. And then user.username equals auth.info.nickname. So nickname is what they call it on Twitter. It's your handle basically. Okay, so like I said, you could do more here. So like something like user dot image or avatar, or whatever you have on your database. And then you could say like auth dot info dot image. That's what comes back from Twitter. So this might vary depending on your provider, but oftentimes they kind of follow the same, um, same conventions there. So that's kind of nice. So one caveat here to getting this to work with device that I found is uh, Twitter especially Twitter doesn't necessarily require an email to sign up or to authenticate a user. So around that principle, we need to define a new method in our user model and say user or email required and just say false. And that feels a bit backwards because with device an email is required to sign up a user, but with this case, I don't want it to be so that there could probably be something done better there, but I think for now, we'll go ahead and skip this uh, concern. And say you have device confirmation set up. So say you confirm users with the email, you can go ahead and say like user.skip confirmation here too, if you want. So I don't have that set up right now, but it is one of those extra things you can add to device, which I have done in the past with apps. So I recommend it kind of increases uh, filtering out the bad guys. So the next thing we wanna do, uh, by default, this will already add a sign up link to your authentication request based on what you've added. So we see a sign in with Twitter already. Uh, I went one step further and just added a nice button to do such a thing. Uh, it's not a big deal if you do this, you can style this one as well, uh, but I'll go ahead and add the one that you saw in, or the demo I did. So let's go ahead and add that to home or views, device, sessions new. And instead of just log in here, I'll do one below it. That's gonna be 
a sign in with Twitter button. We'll make it kind of look like a Twitter login button. So it won't be a submit. It'll actually just be a link to. Don't have to worry about this being in the form. And then we'll say sign in with Twitter. And then pass that, if you recall, those URLs that were right here. We're going to get the authorized path for that one. So let's go ahead and add that. OmniAuth. Authorize. See if my spelling wrecks this whole process. Path, make sure there's a comma. We have a button class, but I'll just kind of make it a little bit different. Say BG Blue. This is Tailwind. Text white with full block and text center. That should give us a little bit nicer of a look and feel there. Uh, we need some margin on, it should be B. I don't know why it's D. There we go. So if all goes correctly, I'm hoping this works. Here goes the Twitter. Okay, not no constraint. Users dot email. Okay, so user email can't be null. I thought I added that method in our user model to uh, accommodate for that. So let's double check our work. Okay, so one thing I need to do that's a caveat here is the email at the moment in our database. This took me a second to figure out. It can't be null. Uh, if we go to schema and we go to email default, null is false on the database. So I actually need to change that. This is kind of a, a Rails pattern uh, for stuff like this to kind of make sure that's false. But that's actually coming from devise, so never mind. But what we want to do is make that null true, and we can create a new migration to do such as such. So I'll do that and say, uh, let's see, Rails generate change email. on users. This is just generic. I'm not going to pass anything. I'll just do this by hand and go to the database, migrate that latest one. We have this change method now. And inside here, I'll go and say change column users. So that's going to be related to the user table. We're going to pass the column itself, which is email. And we'll just say string and then null true. So if all goes right, we do rails db migrate. We should be able to just make this null to true. Let's check our schema real quick. Yeah, so we just have a default of empty string, which that's not really a great thing. You don't want users to sign up with just an empty email. But like I said, for this all, all intents and purposes, this is going to work for us. We could actually even remove the email field. Uh, you could just only provide sign in with these providers. This, you commonly see that actually uh, for that reason, I think. So let's go ahead and sign in. Let's try this again. There we go. So that, that null constraint was the culprit, but you see we get the access successfully authenticated from the Twitter account. Uh, we get back um, enough on me that could you know get our username and stuff back so if logged out we could just say like mm, this isn't gonna look good but see current user so there's my name cool that's all from twitter i didn't even write any of that and let's say class something like that for now. And we could say, I don't know, username too. So current user. Oops, I forgot this. There we go. So that's my handle from Twitter and that's working great. So that's essentially it guys. So you can log out, log back in, this, this link works all the same, so it'll just take you to Twitter, bring it back. One catch, if I, did, I didn't show you this, but you definitely need to remember these four URLs 
in your um, callback URLs. So there's auth Twitter, there's users auth Twitter, there's users auth Twitter callback and auth Twitter callback. So those are all very important. You'll need to define those both production and wherever else you host your app or locally. And that allows Twitter to know where to point the person uh, when they auth on Twitter, they go off to Twitter and come back. It gives you the, the scope of where the user will, will kind of circle back to. So make sure you have those. That will be definitely need to be added to the app you build. Uh, like, the, like I said, this is kind of just a, a constraint of the process, but uh, you will have to do this for each provider, which is sad, but it's part of the game. So hopefully that was helpful. Basically, this pattern right here is repeatable per, per provider. The big thing you could do to scale this up is to not make this just Twitter and make it like um, providers and then loop through all these patterns based off the uh, name here. I've seen a, another method that loops through each provider. You like providers and you do like a, I don't even know, like Twitter. Uh, it would be like something like this, like providers each do something like that. And then you could pass in this method, call it whatever you want and pass in the provider for each one. That way you just, it just takes care of it. So you don't have to do these for like LinkedIn or Facebook, etc. cetera. Uh, one key thing to remember is for device in particular, that's going to give that null to false by default. You'll want to change that at least for Twitter. It might not be the case for other providers like Facebook. You probably need to email to authenticate uh, GitHub, etc. So Twitter is one of those ones that's a little bit different. So I think that's it for now. Uh, coming up, I'll probably extend Devise even further and maybe do some other authentication methods and uh, go from there. So hopefully you like this. If you did, I'd appreciate it. Like or subscribe and would love to hear back from you on future stuff you want me to cover. So let me know in the comments. All right, guys. Peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.